like it? Okay, so my oldest boy, Jack, is obsessed with video gaming. He, that's all he talks about, and the problem is he's really, really good at it. And I promised him that one day I'll help him start like a streaming gaming channel that I could do it with him. So I thought, what better way to kick it off was by building him the ultimate gaming desk. Okay, so what I have here is three quarter inch acacia wood. It's hardwood that's already laminated together. They sell this at Home Depot and Lowe's, 160 bucks a sheet. We're gonna have two tiers to our desk, and I'm gonna start cutting this up. This is a far cheaper alternative than actually start gluing everything up. The dimensions are gonna be 54 inches wide. I don't need this desk to be too wide, but the height will be your standard 29 and a half inches. These are gonna be the side profile of the legs. Now, in order to do that, we first need to start chopping this up on the table saw. We have our bottom tabletop. Congratulations, we did a thing. I want to have a second top on top to hold the monitor. Now, because this is a perfect length, I need it to match the grain, so I'll cut it in half and glue up side by side. Now, the end-to-end -end grain glues are not the strongest, but this is not gonna hold too much weight and we'll reinforce it. So if you're wondering how am I gonna reinforce it, so you can use a couple of ways. Uh, if you don't have this fancy machine, which is called the Domino from Festool, what it does is it creates a mortise, which is a hole, and you can buy these pre-made tenons and it shoves in there precisely tight and then you can clamp them, glue them together and it's a very strong joint. If you don't have it, it's pretty pricey. You can get a biscuit joint. It's I think you can get one for like 60 bucks. I'm gonna match book them or match these two sides as best as I can. Put my little markers down, then I use my fest tool and plunge that hole through. Put some wood glue, put the tenon in, and put some clamps, and we have a tabletop for the monitor. Uh, so now we're gonna do the legs. The legs are gonna be mitered in a square. So in order to achieve that, we have to continue this grain pattern. It'll be six inches wide, so we're gonna throw it on the table saw and rip as many as we can. We technically need eight. If we can get eight, we should be looking good. But first, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Hunting Clash. Hunting Clash is a first perder hunting shooting game. I am an avid hunter that I've taken my hunter saving course years and years ago when I was younger, and I'm excited to actually have a game that I can play on my phone whenever I'm not working. The game is super intuitive and easy to follow. Once the sights are on, you can clearly use this little navigation tool to look around, see where the animals are. I see this big, beautiful mule buck right there. Boom, we got 100% precision. I got 20. 23 points, and it's really educational because it shows, like, okay, this is the mule deer. You took an ethical shot. This is the weapon, the, you have the Staden T4 Hunter that you start with. You can see the zoom, the height, the accuracy, and of course, as you advance, as time goes on, you can start Here's a, a Malice Precision Shooter. Go head to head with other fishers throughout events every week. And Hunting Clash is offering a special promotion for my followers here. If you hit the link in the description to download the app, which is available on iOS and Android, use my gift code to redeem it, Hunt with Alex, and you'll get 100 gold, 70 skills tokens to upgrade your preferred skill and get more points when hunting, one mythical lure from the grizzly bear in Montana so you can hunt bigger animals, one mythical lure from the mountain lion in Montana so you can hunt bigger animals. All this for a total value of $15 only available to new players. Hunting Clash is a very fun game, especially for an outdoorsman like myself. You will really enjoy it as much as I do. There is a link in the description for you to download the app or use a QR code that's on the screen. Use my gift code Hunt with Alex one more time and a big thank you to Hunting Clash for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into this video. Let's go. I got all these pieces cut up at six inches. I'm gonna do the side legs here. We will do miters on the corners, 45 degrees. We'll just glue them up, put a little brad nail to hold them in place and then clamp them tight. It's gonna look so much better than just a basic butt joint, but kind of tread with your own skill set. I'm gonna cut these up real quick on a miter, throw them up together. Learning a lot of things. I hope you guys like this stuff. Make sure you check out my Patreon account. I have extended versions of my videos of stuff that doesn't make it to these YouTube channels that are 18 minutes. They're usually like hour long, unedited stuff, director's cut stuff that you can take and, uh, cause people are always like, you talk too fast. Well, there's extra and extended stuff. And besides, to help support this channel, I keep making stuff with you guys. Let's go. We're getting ready to glue up these miters. They could be a little tricky glued up because, you know, they're gonna move around. So the best way I found this to work is if you flip them over and put tape along all these seams, flip it over again, now you'll be able to roll it close together. Once that's in place with glue, glue we'll use a ratchet strap around it to clamp the pressure evenly together and keeping sure that it's straight and not, you know, cattywamp us out. That's not a real word, huh? Pretty good at making up words. All right, so these puppies have dried overnight. 
Now we have to spice them up a little bit. Being a gaming desk, you gotta make it look like a gaming desk, which means a lot of LEDs. What I wanna do is I wanna carve a channel down the middle of, cause this is gonna be the face, and this is the other face, middle of these legs, and then I wanna carve a channel along the edge of the tabletop itself and the edge of the monitor tabletop as well. So it'll be kind of like this like Tron looking thing. I'm gonna use a dado stack. And what a dado stack is, is a bunch of assortment of blades that you put together based off of this little cheat sheet of how thick you need it. We're gonna go with half inch. So this right here is called a feather board. And what that does is it helps keep whatever you're feeding through up against the fence so it's not coming out. When it comes out away from the fence, it's not a good straight cut. Oh, one more thing, I just realized. So as I proceed one corner, there might be a tear out on the part that I'm coming out of. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it'll not. This is not the sharpest set of data blades I have. I'm gonna put tape around every edge that I'm gonna do this on and they'll definitely give me a better chance to have a nice cleaner cut. I'm liking this design so much that even without LEDs, you can guarantee that you'll see me building some kind of table legs with just putting these kind of grooves in. It just, let me know. Do you guys like it in the comment section? I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. I'm gonna start ripping off the remainder pieces uh, to just kind of elevate it, create a way to secure it. Okay, so we're gonna attach the spacers. I decided to go with two instead of one just because one's kind of a little too basic and I feel like it's not as strong. To make it easy, I'm just gonna put a couple of pilot holes, put a couple of screws from here in, with wood glue, and then we'll do bracketing to secure the top to keep you know wood movement and all that stuff at play. All right, so this is the idea of the desk. It looks so cool. I love the side profile. I love that this is raised. And then this is gonna be the top monitor piece. The monitor sits right there. I bought these LED lights on Amazon. I wanted specifically them to be like a three-way thing, meaning there's three different independent strands. The nice thing is the LEDs usually have a sticker on the back side of it, so I'll peel it off and I'll start wrapping things off. Once everything's perfect, we'll start getting the epoxy ready. All right, we'll have to cut it right over here without damaging all the leads. Let's just do a quick test run, make sure all the LEDs work before we start putting the epoxy, because that'll be annoying if that's the problem. We got lights, baby. Let's do epoxy. We gotta start preparing the epoxy. Here's the gist of it. We're gonna take a lot of these scrap pieces of wood and we're gonna barricade frame this off except for the top, because that's what I'll be pouring from. In order for the epoxy to release this piece of wood, we have to cover it in a sheathing tape. This is stuff they use to tape your, uh, exterior shell of a framed house, the uh, the weatherproofed uh, sheathing material to put on there. So we'll cover each piece with this tape and then I'm gonna put just a few brad nails to hold in place. We're gonna use a caulking tool. So we're gonna put a big chunk amount down and then we're gonna press it in. It's gonna create a nice tight seal and then everything on the outside will be able to peel off uh, tomorrow when it dries. I have caulking tools, but sometimes the finger works just fine. It's the next day, all of our caulking is dry. We're ready to start pouring the epoxy. I've used a bunch of different epoxies and I'm not really a pro at it. I've just had a few projects where I tried it. So this is the stuff that I've used before. System three, their river cast for just this setup was 270 bucks. Now this one kind of bit a little bit. Very important, you spend the time mixing it. I think according to this ratio, it's like a full five minutes of mixing. Do not skip out at it. Time's up, let's get to pouring. So one of the most common questions I always get from people is what is the hardest project you've ever done or where have you scro screwed up and it costs quite a bit of money to fix it and this is that project. Everything went wrong. I will be completely honest, this has been sitting for seven days because it's like a slow cast, which seems like a slow drying period. I had to report it three different times. It would seep through all the, either the, the caulking that we used or oh, the glue that we used. Uh, and I probably even rushed the process a little bit. In hindsight, if you will try this, my advice for, to you is gonna be use the Tyvek tape, right? Use the, the wood forms to you know staple it on with the brad nails, but then go one step further. Put waterproofing silicone on the inside and then on the outside like I did here. 
it was coming out of every orifice. I was so stressed out, but we got it. I have multiple pours. I've used up the entire bottle. I had to buy more, more, more epoxy, but we got it. We learned our lesson. So if you're gonna try it, follow these instructions. Uh, don't do the way I did it, and I think you'll save yourself quite a bit of money and frustration on the epoxy pour. Let's start cutting with our utility knife, popping these puppies off, and we'll do a whole bunch of cleaning. So it's coming off pretty easily. The, the place you get in trouble is obviously with the epoxy uh, spilled and a straight up on the wood. Look how clear that turned out. By us sanding it, it will scuffing this up and create a more of an opaque look so we won't see the LED lights when they're turned off. Uh, if you find a better way how to make sure nothing spills out when it comes to epoxy and all that stuff comes off easily, let me know, I'd love to know. But in the meantime, we're just gonna keep trucking and uh, put a lot of grunt work in here. So this is about as clean as I was able to get. Obviously there's some of the glue still there. Uh, I'm gonna start hitting up with the 120 grit. It's coarse enough to take a bunch of it off. Um, I'm assuming I'm gonna go through a bunch of sandpaper. Now, uh, in terms of finish, I'll probably hit it with 220, put a little oil, see what it looks like if it's a perfect opa opacity. If not, we might go up into 300, but we'll just see how it goes. All right, boys and girls, we sanded everything down to 220 grit. It looks fantastic, nice and clean. I love this raw color. I'm gonna put these brackets back in place for this channel via the pocket hole screws. Now, before we attach the top to the bottom, we have to accommodate for wood movement, meaning I can't just willy-nilly put screws in there. I have a little bit of uh, scrap leftover two inch wide material, it's an eighth inch thick. I'm gonna cut it with a reciprocating saw, put a couple of holes, and then we'll secure the top via that method. It's important to note whenever you're drilling through metal, do not go full blast on your drill. It'll sometimes, yes, it'll cut quickly for a cut or two, but then the tips will get so hot, you'll actually see color changing on them. And uh, at that point, you're just gonna be dulling it. So the last things we have to do is recess these puppies in, because if we don't, then the top lays on top here. And you can get away with it, but I just, you can make it look prettier. So I'm gonna use my little palm router with a little cutout bit, trace it out and just cut it out. You can chisel it out, whatever you wanna do, my friend. So we're talking about wood movement and securing this in a way that doesn't wobble, but also uh, allows for this to move you know, slightly if ever it has to happen. These are one inch screws, and then this is where the big money maker is, a washer. By putting this in in that combination, it'll hold the top to the legs without wobbling, and if this really wants to go, again, very small increments, uh, this will give it a little bit of a wiggle room to be able to accommodate it and prevent it from uh, corkscrewing it. Folks, the table's done, well, at least the first part of it. Clear coat time to seal this puppy off. I'm using this water-based polyacrylic. This is a clear satin HVLP sprayer. High volume, low pressure. Gonna give it a nice couple of coats to make sure it'll absorb everything that, you know, it's not gonna leave any stains. And then we'll go and start working on the tower after that. Uh, solid in. All right, you might be wondering, what is this that we're doing here? Well, I wanna make this desk extra cool. Uh, if you ever seen like light box trusses in a stage production like this, well, I wanna make that, something similar to that. I wanna build that over to the top where the monitor will be and suspend like speakers for the gaming console uh, to point down on you, maybe a light bar if you're gonna be streaming or something like that. This is cool because I didn't know it, but before, you'd have to buy plumbing steel that has threads on it and put all these connections. But now you can just get the stuff that has no threads, you slip it in and there's an Allen key that tightens it in place. So you can make any configuration you want. It's basically putting Legos together. Here is the uh, trusses light box cage that we're making. Everything that you see that's black right there, that's usually some kind of transition fitting, whether it's a 90 degree elbow, maybe it's a T. The diameter or the distance or the width of this desk is exactly the, the, the size of our 
tabletop, which makes it a lot easier. The center uh, monitor part will be 34 inches wide. We're gonna build these up, and then that'll give us enough room for the big monitor and all that stuff. So in the meantime, I'm gonna use a chop saw, start cutting up all these uh, metal pipes. If you don't have one, you could use a reciprocating saw with a reciprocating metal blade. Uh, totally doable. This elbow here is gonna be for the speaker to be mounted on. And what's nice is, even though they cut this hole, there's a plug that you can put into it. Again, I've never knew these kits existed. I think it has to be like a recent thing. All right, finishing touches before this aluminum style uh, lighting trusses are done is I got these platforms that will match the top. Uh, these are gonna be for the speakers. I got these really cool retro gaming speakers. The aluminum lighting trusses look incredible. This looks like a stage production kind of thing. It's so cool. All right, accessory time. We got these sweet speakers I found on Amazon. And uh, what's a streaming gaming setup? without a, a proper lighting condition to for the cameras. This is incredible already. I cannot believe this is what we come up with. The trick right now is to run all these wires through the tubing here and connecting all the LEDs so that everything's working in a module down below. I'm gonna figure out all the design uh, attachments and go from there. I drilled holes in the side of this tower, so I'm gonna run wire from left to right speaker through this top channel. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around watching yet another one of my videos. It means the world to me. And if you're brand new channel and you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project or builds, make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell that will be alerted every time a video comes out. Connect with me on my social media. All the links will be in the description below as well as my Patreon and the merch section. All help support the channel. Fun fact about the Patreon account, we have extended versions of these videos hour-long director's uncut versions. There's a lot of information that did not make it into just an 18-minute video. Hopefully, that will serve you guys a lot of help on these builds. A huge thank you to Hunting Class for sponsoring this video. Make sure you use the link in the description to download the app and use my gift code HUNTWITHALEX to redeem your offer. And I can't wait to see you on the next build. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye. Oh, where's this coming out of? It's right there. There it is. All right, we are dripping. We are dripping. It's coming just out of this little section here. Uh, it is coming out of the bottom. Crap. Okay, we're gonna waste a bunch of epoxy right now.